Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, <clears throat> Rising Tides, Chapter 19. And I warned you that the last <laughs> that one was emotional too. This one is even more emotional. When he saw her car in the driveway, Ethan had to force himself not to rush into the house just for a look at her. Quick glimpse, just one. He could take all of her into his mind with just one look. He hadn't known it was possible to miss a woman, to miss anything the way he was missing Grace. The way he thought that left the way he thought that left him empty and aching and edgy every hour of every day until he was desperate to fill the void, until he laid awake at night listening to the air breathe, until he thought he was losing his mind. The control he kept in place for so many years where she was concerned seemed constantly shaken these days. The walls of that control had already been breached, were tumbled at his feet so that he could swear he was choking on their dust. She, she supposed once a man let it go, it was hard to build it back up again, but he left the choice in her hands, he reminded her. Since she hadn't made a move in his direction in days, he's afraid he knew which choice she made. She couldn't blame her for it either. She would find someone else, someone else could make a life with. The thought burned in his gut as it loitered by his truck, but he refused to let it pass. She deserved to have what she wanted out of life. That was marriage and children and a pretty home. Father for Aubrey, a man who would appreciate both of them for the treasures they were. Another man, another man who would slip his arms around her waist, rub his mouth over hers, hear her breath quicken, though her bones go soft. Some faceless son of a bitch who wasn't good enough for her would turn to her in the night, sick and s in the night, sink inside her and smile every goddamn morning because he knew he could do it again. Christ, Ethan thought it was making him crazy. Foolish bumped into his leg, a ratty tennis ball clamped hopefully in his mouth, his tail wagging persuasively, and a habitable move. Ethan tucked him ball free and tossed it. Foolish bound after it, yapping furiously when Simon darted. Like a bullet from the left and intercepted. Ethan only sighed when Simon's brakes back sat and waited for the game to continue. As good an excuse as any to stay outside, Ethan decided he would fool with the dogs, go fiddle with his boat, stay out of Grace's way. If he had wanted to see him, if she if she had wanted to see him, she could have found him. Dogs worked him around the side yard and take a pity on the slower, less skilled foolish keeps have found a stick to toss along with the ball. I lightened his mood a little to watch them bash into each other, wrestle fetch and retrieve you could depend on a dog he thought giving the ball higher harder to us since simon bouncing in pursuit they never asked for more than you could give them he didn't see grace until he was well around the house then he simply stood no no one look one quick glimpse was enough but never be enough the sheet still lifted to the line flap wetly in the breeze as she pegged it the sun was on her hair as he watched, she bit to the basket, took out a pillowcase, gave it a quick snap, then clipped it beside the sheets. Love flooded into him, swamped him, left him weak and needy. Small details hammered him. The curve of her cheek and profile. Had, her ever, had he ever noticed how elegant her profile was? The way her hair sat on her head, feathered at the back of her neck. Was she letting it grow? The way the trim cut of her shorts skimmed her thigh. She had such long, smooth thighs. Foles wrapped his head against Ethan's leg and snapped him back. Abruptly nervous, he wiped his hands on his work pants, shifted his feet. It was probably best he decided if he'd just slip back around the front. Went into the house and upstairs. He took the first step back and pulled up short when she turned. She gave him a long look. One he couldn't read, then went to take out another pillowcase. Hello, Ethan. Grace tucked his hands in his pockets. It wasn't often he heard her voice quite so cool. It's foolish to go all the way back around to the front of the house just to avoid me. I was going to check something on the boat. <laughs> That's fine. You can do that after I talk to you. I wasn't sure you wanted to talk to me. He approached her cautiously. Her tone of voice took the blistering heat right out of the day. I tried to talk to you the other night, but you weren't inclined to listen. She reached into the basket, apparently unperturbed that she was now hanging in his underwear. Then I needed a little time to myself to settle everything in my head. And have you? Oh, I think so. First, I should tell you that what you told me about what you went through before you came here shocked me, and it hurt me. I had nothing but pity for that little boy in rage about what happened to him. She glanced at him as she carried the next clothespin. You don't want to hear that. You don't want me to think that I have feelings about it, that it touched me. No, he said. No, I didn't want it to touch you. 
because I'm so fragile, because I'm delicate of nature. His brows drew together partly, and so you hoarded that nasty little seed all for yourself. She went on calmly, working her way down the clothesline. Even though there's nothing in or in or of my life that you don't know. It's the way it should be, in your opinion, that I'm an open book and you're a closed one. No, it wasn't that exactly. What could it have been exactly? She wondered, but he didn't think uh, it was a question wisely formed. No answer. I've been thinking about that, Ethan. I've been thinking about a number of things. Why don't we go back a ways first? You like to do things in neat, logical steps. Since you like things to be done your way, well, we'll just be neat and logical. The dog, sensing trouble, retreated to the water. Ethan found himself pivoting in them. You told me you've loved me for years. Years, she said with such quick fury that her nearly stumbled back. I nearly stumbled back. But you don't do anything about it. You don't once, not once, come up to me and ask me if I'd like to spend some time with you. One word from you, one look from you would have thrilled me. No, oh, no. Oh, no, no. Not Ethan Quinn. Not with his broody mind and incredible control. You just kept your distance. Let me pine over you. I didn't know you would have those kinds of feelings for me. Then you're blind as well as stupid, she snapped. His bros are stupid. That's what I said. Seeing the outrage cross his face was bomb to her up battered ego. I would never have looked twice at Jack Casey if you'd given me anything to hope for. But I needed someone to want me, and it sure as hell didn't appear it was ever going to be you. Now just a damn minute. I'm not the, I'm not the blame for you marrying Jack. No, I take the blame. I take the responsibility and I don't regret it because it gave me Aubrey. But I blame you, Ethan. Those gold flecked green eyes blaze them. I blame you for being too pig headed to take what you wanted and you hadn't changed a damn bit. You were too young. She used both hands and all the force of the temper went into the show. Oh shut up. You had your say now I'm having mine. The kitchen says the eyes went hot. You made a dash for the door, only to be brought up short by Anna, who was eavesdropping his horse again. No, you don't. He yelled at her. She's yelling, too. He's fighting with her. I'm going to stop him. Anna cocked her. Does she look like she needs any help? His mouth said. Says glared through the screen, then reconsidered when he saw Grace shove Ethan back and full step. I guess not. Can you handle him? Amused, she gave Seth a scrubbing pat on the top of the dog. How come you don't leap to my defense when Cam and I argue? Because he's afraid of you. And I rolled her tongue into her cheek and chewed in the other. Oh, really? Half afraid, anyway, says the little grin. He never knows what you'll do, and besides, you guys like to argue. Observant little brat, aren't you? He struck cheerful now. I see what I see. And know what you know, laughing, she edged closer to the door with him, hoping for a better view. Let's move to the next step, Ethan. Grace shoved the empty basket out of her way with her foot. Fast forward a few years. Think you can keep up? He took a long breath. Cause he didn't want to yell. You're pissing me off, Grace. Good. I meet you, and I hate to fail at something I'm working on. It wasn't sure which emotion came up on top of noise or bafflement was gotten into you. Oh, I don't know, Ethan. Let's see. Could it be the fact that you think I'm so brainless? Helpless female. Yes, you know. She jabbed her dindex finger in his chest like a drill in the wood. I bet that's just what's gotten into me. I don't think you're brainless. Oh, just helpless then. Even as he opened his mouth, she was rolling over him. Do you think a helpless woman could do what I've been doing the last few years? You think... Do you think what... Was it you called me once delicate, like your mama's good china? I'm not china. She split. I'm good solid stoneware, the kind you can drop and it rattles around on the floor. doesn't shatter. You have to work to break good stoneware, Ethan, and I'm not broken yet. She put her finger in his chest again, darkly pleased when it was all last slashed the morning. I wasn't so helpless when I got you into my bed. Was I? Which is where I wanted you. You didn't give me anywhere. Hell, I didn't, and you're brainless if you think differently. I reeled you in like a goddamn rockfish. Gave her pressure. Pleasure. Oh, so vivid pleasure. See both fury and frustration race over his face. You think a statement like that flatters either of us? You think a statement like that flatters either of us? I'm not trying to flatter you. I'm telling you straight out. I wanted you, and I went after you. If I'd left the matter up to you, we'd have been pitching each other's butts in a nursing home, Jesus Christ. Just be quiet. There was no stopping now. Whatever the consequence is not with this word seed crashing in her head. You just think about that, Ethan Quinn. You give that some good long thought and you don't and don't you dare call me fragile again. He gave her a slow nod. It's not the word that's come to mind at the moment. 
good. I haven't needed you or anyone to help me build a decent life for my baby. I use muscle and I use guts to do what needed to be done. So don't tell me I'm China. You wouldn't have had to do all that alone if you were too damn proud to settle things with your father. I'm sure that dad put a hitch in her step. She balled her fist and rushed on. We're talking about you and me. You say you love me, Ethan, but you don't know, but you don't for one minute understand me. I'm starting to agree with that, he muttered. You've got some ego-ridden male idea in your head that I need to be taken care of, protected, coddled. When one, what I need is to be needed and respected and loved. And you'd know that if you paid attention. You ask yourself this, Ethan. Who seduced whom? Who said I love you first? Who proposed marriage? Are you so nearsighted? You can't see I've had to take every step first with you? You make it sound like you've been leading me by the nose, Grace. I don't care for that. I couldn't lead you by the nose if I jabbed a fish hook in it. You go exactly where where you want to go, Ethan, but you can be so infuriating slow. I love that about you, and I admire it. Now I understand it more. You had a terrible period in your life when you had no control. Now you take not now you take care not to lose it, but you can slip from control under stubbornness in one short step, and that's just what you've done. I'm not being stubborn, I'm being right. Right. It's right for two people to love each other and not build a life out of it. It's right to pay all your life for what someone else did to you when you were too young to defend yourself against it. Is it right for you to stay, say you can't and won't marry me because you're stained and you made some ridiculous promise to yourself never to have a family of your own? Sounded off when she said it like that. It sounds stupid. It's the way it is. Because you say so. I told you how it is, Grace. I gave you the choice. Their jaw hurt from clenching it. People like to say they're giving somebody a choice when what they're really saying is do this my way. I don't like your way, Ethan. Your way only takes into account what was and doesn't add what is or what could be. You think I don't know what you expected? You take your stand in sweet, delicate grace would just fall in line. I didn't expect you to fall in line. Then crawl off, wounded, and pine after you for the rest of my life. You're getting you're getting neither. If you give I'll give you a choice this time, Ethan. You straighten yourself out. You go on and think things through for the next eon or two. Then let me know what conclusions you've come to. Because my stand is this. It's marriage or it's nothing. I'll be damned if I spend the rest of my life pining over you. I can live without you. She tossed back her head. Let's see if, a man, if you're man enough to live without me. She whirled around and stalked off, leaving him fuming. <laughs> Upstairs, Anna hisses. He's coming inside. Now it's my turn. Are you going to yell at him, too? Maybe. I want to watch. Not this time. She all put shelter about the upstairs. I mean it. Hell, he stomped through the stairs. Wait a minute. Slip back down the hallway. Anna was pouring herself a honey, homey cup of coffee when Ethan slammed the back door. Part of her wanted to go over and give him a big sympathetic hug. He looked so miserably unhappy and confused, but the way she figured it, there were times when it was best all around to kick a good man when he was down. Want some? He flickered a glance at her and kept no thanks. Hold it. She smiled sweetly when he stopped, when she all but saw the jittery waves of impatience shimmering around. I need to talk to you for a minute. I'm about, I'm about talked out for today. That's all right. Deliberately, she put a chair out from him. You sit down and I'll talk. Women, Ethan decided as he dropped into the chair with a bane of his excuse. I guess I'll take the coffee then. All right. She poured him a mug, brought him a spoon so he could dump his customary heaps of sugar into it. She sat, folding her arms neatly, and continued to smile. You stupid jerk. Oh, Jesus. He rubbed his hands over his face. Look, not another one. I'm going to make it easy on you at first. I was a question. You answer. Are you in love with Grace? Yes, but... No qualifications. Yeah, I cut him off. The answer is yes. Is Grace in love with you? Hard to say just now. He shifted his hand to nurse the point of his chest where she all but poured a hole in him. The answer is yes. And I said, are you both single, otherwise unattached adults? He could feel himself sinking into a sulk and deserted, detested. Yeah, so? Just laying the groundwork, gathering the facts. Grace has a child, correct? You know damn well. Correct. Anna lifted her cup, took a sip of Do you have feelings of affection for me? Of course I do. I love her. Who wouldn't? And does she have feelings of affection for you? Sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wonderful. We've established the emotions of the parties involved. Now let's move on to stability. You have a profession and a new business. You appear to be a man with skill who's willing to work and has the capability of earning a good living. Have you incurred any large outstanding debts you believe you'll have difficulty meeting? For God's sake. No offense intended, she said brightly. I'm simply approaching this matter the way I assume you would. Calmly, patiently, step by tedious step. He narrowed his eyes at her. Seems to me people are having major problems with how I do things lately. 
I love the way you do things. She reached across the table, gave his tense hand an affectionate sweep. I love you, Ethan. It's wonderful for me to have a big brother at this stage of my life. Shifted in his chair. He still spoke the obvious serenity in her eyes, but he had a feeling she was tenderizing him in preparation for the roasting to come. I don't know what's going on around here. I think you'll figure it out. So we'll say you're financially sound. Grace, as we know, is well capable of earning a living. You own your own home and a one-third share in this one. Shelter certainly isn't an issue, so we'll move on. Do you believe in the institution of marriage? He knew a trick question when he heard one. It works for some people, doesn't work for others. No, no. Do you believe in the institution itself? Yes or no? Yes, but... Then why the hell aren't you down on one knee with a ring in your big clumsy hand making the woman you love to give you fat-headed another chance? I'm a patient man, he says, but I'm getting tired of insults. Don't you dare get out of that chair, she warned him when he started to scrape it back. I swear I'll bet you. God knows I want to. That's another thing that's going around. <laughs> he subsided only because it seemed easier to get it all over with. Go ahead then. Say what you have to say. You think I don't understand? You think I can't relate to what's eating you up inside? You're wrong. I was raped when I was 12 years old. Shock shoulders his hard pain. Screams. Jesus, Anna. Jesus. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Now you do. Does it change me, Ethan? Are not the same person I was 30 seconds ago? She reached for his hand again, held it this time. I know what it is to be helpless and terrified and want to die, and I know what it is to make something of your life despite that. And I know what it's to have that horror in you always, no matter how much you've learned, no matter how much you've come to accept it. I know it was never, ever your fault. It's not the same. It's never the same, not for any two people. We have something more in common as well. I never knew who my father was. Was he a good man or a bad one? Tall or short? Did he love my mother or did he use her? I don't know what parts were passed to me. But you knew your mother. <laughs> yes. She was wonderful, beautiful, and yours wasn't. She beat you physically and emotionally. She made you a victim. Why are you letting her keep you one? Why are you letting her win even now? It's me now, and <laughs> there has to be something twisted, something sour inside a man to make them the way she was. I came from that. Sins of the fathers, Ethan. I'm not taking on her sins. I'm talking about heredity. You can pass the color of your eyes, your build, weak hearts, alcoholism, longevity. Those things can run in families. You've given this a lot of thought. Yeah, I have. I had to make a decision, and I made it. So you decided you could never marry or have children? It wouldn't be fair. Well, then, you better talk to Seth before too long. Seth? Someone has to tell him he's never going to be able to have a wife and children. It's best if he knows that early, so he can try to protect himself from becoming emotionally involved with women. With women. For a tree of heartbeats, he can only gape at her. What the hell are you talking about? Heredity. We can't be sure what bad traits Gloria DeLotner passed down to him. God knows she's got something twisted inside of her, just as you said. A whore, a drunk, a junkie, from all accounts. There's nothing wrong with that boy. What difference does that make? She might eat this very stare blindly. He should be allowed to take chances. You can't mix him in with me this way. I don't see why. You both come from similar situations. In fact, there are far too many cases that come through social surfaces nationally that slip into parallel categories. I wonder if we can pass a law to prevent children of abusers from marrying and having children of their own. They give us the risks were void. Why don't you just guild them? He said viciously. That's an interesting concept, she leaned for. Since you're so determined not to pass on an unhealthy gene season, have you considered a vasectomy? The instinctive and purely male cringe never made her laugh. That's enough, Anna. Is that what you would recommend to Seth? I said that's enough. Oh, it's more than enough, she agreed. But answer this last question. Do you think that bright, troubled child should be denied a full and normal life as an adult because he had the bad luck to be conceived by a heartless person? Heartless, perhaps, evil woman? No, his brother. No, that's not what I think. No buts this time. No qualifications. Then I'll tell you that in my professional opinion, I couldn't agree with you more. He deserves everything he can grab, everything he can make, and everything we can give him to show him that he's, own, he's his own person, not the damaged product of one vile woman. And neither are you, Ethan. Anything but... Ethan. 
anything but your old man. Stupid, maybe, she said with a smile, but admirably, honorably, and incredibly kind. She went to him, put an arm around his shoulder. When he sighed, turned his face to press against his midriff, tears stung her eyes. I don't know what to do. Yes, you do, she said. Being you, you'll have to think about it for a while. But do yourself a favor this time, and think fast. I guess I'll go down to the boatyard and work until I get it clear in my head. Because she was feeling suddenly maternal tore up, she bent kissed the top of him and said, You want me to pack you some food? <laughs> no. He gave her a squeeze before he rose. When he saw that her eyes were damp, he patted her, so don't cry, camel out of my head. If he finds out, I made you cry. I won't. <laughs> well, then, he started out hesitating, turned back, but he really stuttered her head. She's in the kitchen, her lashes wet, her hair tangled from being out in the And um, my mother, my real mother. He had it because Stella Quinn was in his mind all over. I would have loved you. Well, Anna thought as he walked away, she was going to cry after all. He either kept going, particularly when he heard Anna sniffle. He needed to be alone, clear out his head, and let the thoughts gather again. Hey. His hand on the door, he looked over his shoulder and saw Seth on the stairs. With the boy had dashed like a skillful rabbit seconds before he was going to start out the door. Hey, what? Seth stared down slowly. He heard everything, every word, even when his stomach had began to pitch. He had stayed and listened as he studied each and out. Hours he thought he understood and he felt safe. Where are you going? Back to the boatyard. I gave some things I want to finish up. Ethan let the door east close again. There's something in the boy's eyes, he thought. <sighs> you okay? Yeah. Can I go on the workboat with you tomorrow? If you want. If I went with you. We'd finish sooner, and we'd be able to work on the boat with Cam. When Phil comes down on the weekend, we can all work on her together. <laughs> that's how it goes. He just said puzzle. Yeah, that's how it goes. All of them said, the whole flash pure joy together. It's hard work because it's hot as bitch in heat. <laughs> He's going be at the back of the jungle. Watch the mouth. And it's in the kitchen. Set shocked, but aimed a weary glance behind him. She's cool. Yeah. He smiles. She's cool. Don't stay up half the night drawing a buggy, drawing or bugging your eyes out on the TV if you're working with me in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Seth waited until Ethan was outside and snatched up the bag, sitting beside the shelf. Hey, cries the boy, are you gonna let me out of here before tomorrow? Grace forgot her purse. Seth pushed it at Ethan's hand, kept his face blank in his. I guess she had something on her mind when she left. I guess. Perhaps did and Ethan stared down at it. Their thing weighed ten pounds if it weighed an ounce. He thought you ought to take it over to her. Women go nuts if they don't have the purses. See ya. He raced back inside, pounded up the stairs and straight to the first window that faced the front of the house. From there he could watch Ethan scratch his head, shove the purse under his arm like a football, walk slowly to the truck. His brother sure his brother sure could be weird, he thought. Then he grinned to himself. His brothers. Letting out a whoop, he raced down the steps to head for the kitchen. Nag Anna for something to eat. End of chapter 19.